Yep. Okay. All right, y'all. It's black hoodie. I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. All right, yo. What is up and what is good with y'all? Today we are going to have extra crispy recipe from KFC and a Chattanooga as it is such. You, yep. Mm -hmm. Things of that nature. But really what I'm saying is this. Extra crispy recipe from KFC should be standard, right? We know this. At least if you live in America, you would know this. But here in Canadian land, it hasn't been as such. We've been waiting on extra crispy for some time now. Now, a month ago, I went to KFC and was like, y'all got extra crispy recipe? And they're like, no, but it's coming soon. And now here it is today. And I didn't mean even to get this today, but in my travels on my errands, which is a conversation we're going to have a whole talk about, about being chatty in society and how it's old hat and nobody does it anymore, but how I'm bringing it back. I like to be chatty in society when it is appropriate. Okay. But anyways, double fried, double breaded, I should say, extra crispy recipe. I got uh, enthralled <laughs> by the sign. I pulled in real quick, <laughs> real quick to get it. And we got stories on stories to talk about this chicken and my errands. Cause I got the gift of gab and I can make anything pedestrian and or mundane interesting. That's the gift that God gave me to talk a bunch of shit about standard shit that becomes interesting shit. Okay. It's like, yeah, well, I mean, Hey, that's being a comedian. That's all you do. You observe the world and you talk about it from all the weird angles that you see it. I'm going to do that here while we eat extra crispy chicken. This is a long ass fucking intro is what it is though. All good. All right. So today we're keeping it crispy with a cold water. We like cold water around here. Uh, I've got all the barbecue sauce. I've got three barbecue sauces into a different vessel here. I've got ketchup. I've got a little fries. And then I got a four piece extra crispy recipe chicken. And then I have obviously de grave. I really didn't plan this. This just, it kind of just happened today, to be honest with you. But I'm stoked. Like who... You know, you can't go wrong with a little delicious fried chicken gravy life experiment. So what we do is we got these fries in here, right? Perfect. And then we get the ketchup in here. Perfect. <laughs> and we dip that. And then we do my favorite move. The ketchup and the gravy together. Letting off steam. And you bring it together and you just appreciate it. That's what you do. You just appreciate it. Because honestly, after the conversation I had with the lady working at KFC, it was about an attitude of gratitude. But we'll get to that. I was also texting with a subscriber as well who put up a Instagram posts that just made me come back into self and be like, you're so lucky, right? Just be grateful for who and what you are and what you got and people around you and everything. Sometimes we need to check in with ourselves like that. So anyways, maybe I should give thanks for this meal. Um, okay, so, 
let's do this linearly speaking. I started my day by going to the grocery store early in the morning. Look at this. That's a double dredge. Extra crispy drumstick. With that BBQ. I started my day. I went to the grocery store because I just, I honestly needed soda water and paper towel. Just simple. Nothing crazy. I just needed a couple things. But I've been implementing in my life. And I know not everybody out in society wants it, but I only do it when it feels energetically correct. When I can tell the person is probably receptive to having a little bit of a chat. I feel like back in the day before technology, we lived in a society where we well, I know this to be fact because I, I lived it. I lived in the, the era where, you know, we talked to each other more. In general life. In everyday interactions, we had human connection. And since, you know, tech has taken over... It's not that it's non-existent, but it's less frequent. That we just have random interactions with random people who we don't know. But fills energetically inside our human soul it feels like a deep well that is needed like it, it it really is for not for everybody but for certain people you know we need that i need that i'm that kind of guy i like to chat with people i think it's I think it's um, rejuvenative. It rejuvenates the soul. It allows you to still know that you're human. That we're still all in the shit together. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I go and I, uh, I'm getting my... My... Uh, my items, my paper towel, and my soda water... And I'm in line at the till in my old school grocery store. Like I said, I've told you about this, where the bread loaf brutalizer was. And it's not a fast paced place. It's, it's, it's old school. It's chill. That's why I like it. I like going there because it's not insane. It's not insane with people. It's not insane with technology. It's, it reminds me of the good old days. Okay. I get a little nostalgic and retroactive so I pull up the cashier the lady she's like you know 55 the person checking out is a woman she's like 40 she's got a cool hat on beanie well dressed I hate when this happens to my regurgitative nature I get all these this happens now it's cleared okay <laughs> um and you know she's got a bunch she's got a big load of groceries and then there's a guy next to her he's older I want to say 65 like a retired kind of guy and he's got uh, uh canned or not canned but jarred herring and then he's got fish, frozen, 
and he's got, he's got three cans of beans, <laughs> and then he's got two of these things called imperial cheese. And imperial cheese is delicious. I love imperial cheese. It's a mainstay staple in my family. My grandma used to put out on uh, Christmas and stuff like that. And uh, it's a, it's like in a cream cheese tub, like the smaller ones, but it's a sharp cheddar and it breaks off into pieces in chunks. And you generally have it with crackers or whatever. But I'm sitting there, he glances at me. He kind of gives me this like energy, like I'm down to talk if you are. I'm like, I'm always down to fucking talk. I love talking. Now this is probably a thigh. Look at that extra crasp. I think this is probably a thigh. I'm always down to talk. I love talking to people. I'll be honest with you. It's like one of my favorite things in life. That's why I, I like, I love going out, socializing, socializing. if you ever watched that video. I love talking to people. I think people are the most interesting shit on the planet, to be honest with you. <laughs> so, my brain goes, you got something in common. You got imperial cheese. Talk about it. So I say to him, I go, good choice with the imperial cheese. <laughs> and this is something that I'm trying to, back at the start of the video, I'm trying to implement into my life more often is just chatting with my fellow man in in situations where it's like this isn't a social environment but what you know what what constitutes what dictates a social environment why can't the grocery store be a social environment why has it got to be a bar or club it doesn't so he goes he goes i know it's so good right I'm like, yeah, man, usually like very expensive though. He goes, they're on sale, $5.99. That's why I got two. <laughs> you know, he's maximizing on the deal. And I go to him, I go, oh yeah, they're usually like $9.99, $10.99. And they are, they're expensive for this little thing of cheese. High-end cheese. And he goes, <laughs> he goes, there's one left. You should go get it. And I was like, I'm too fixated on my position right now. I just, I just need to check out and get on my day, but hopefully I can pick it up for cheap later. So while we're having that combo, the chicken, the beanie, She's smiling at us. She won't chime in. She's smiling though. She's happy that we're having combo. And then the the uh, <laughs> the the cashier, the L, you know, fifty five ish lady. She chimes in and she goes, "I love it for my pierogies." <laughs> I'm like. I love pierogies. How do you, what are we talking about? And she goes, I, when I home make pierogies, home, like make pierogies at home, home make pierogies, I put them in the center of my pierogies. I go, oh, like you do the mashed potato, you put in the imperial, you put it in the mash as sharp cheddar, and then you make like a shaggy dough, you know? And she's like, She's like, yeah, but I never get my dough right. Like time and time again, I always. I always 
you know, it never comes out exactly how I had the other time, right? I was like, all right, fair enough. No, I totally get it because I've, I've experimented with those too. It's tough to get a dough exactly right, especially with baking because baking has to do everything with, you know, even the weather, right? Like the day that you're baking on can change the outcome of your recipe because of temporal temperature type factors on that day. Relative to weather. <laughs> so we're just talking about that. And then I, I dip, I leave. And I'm cruising home. And I did not mean to get... I wasn't even thinking about KFC or anything like that. Like, But I hit this corner and all of a sudden... There's a sign there saying that they now have extra crispy recipe, which I was so intrigued and invested with at KFC because I always want to try KFC's extra crispy. <laughs> because where I'm at, the original fry... Is generally, I want to say it's, it's kind of a soggy batter. Like it, 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 the heat, the moisture makes it like wilt almost. And you end up just eating like a soggy piece of chicken in a sense with original recipe. I turn in, skirt up and... I didn't realize the time really. Like I knew it was nearing lunch, but I didn't know I was still like literally a minute away from it opening because I didn't know that KFC opened at 11. So I turn in, I get out, I go up, try to open the door, it's locked. I'm kind of bamboozled and then I realize Oh, it doesn't open till 11. It's 10.59. So while I'm standing there, 10.59, like, okay, they're going to open in one minute. This woman comes. She's working the till. She's elderly, like 60-ish. She opens the door, like unlocks the door. Sees me there standing, but doesn't open the door to say like, hey, hello, come on in. She just unlocks it and, <laughs> and walks away, which is to my dismay because I've worked in so many customer service settings in, in like, you know, a little bit higher end restaurants where it's like, if there's customers waiting to get in, you greet them. That's just how you, like I was just raised that way. I was also trained that way through my service industry training, but you, you greet people to like, you unlock the door and you open the door and you say, Hey, like I acknowledge that you exist and come on in. Right. I'm going to come in anyways, regardless of if you invite me or not, like I'm still coming in. And that kind of bewildered me a little bit, but that's whatever. Not that big of a deal. Anyways, she ended up being a really nice person. But so I go, I'm the first one in there. And uh, I order the extra crispy, the, the this four piece meal that I'm currently eating now with you. <laughs> and and uh, I asked her about like, you know, has it been selling well? Like what's. the deal and she's like honestly in the last month i've sold like five boxes of the, of the crispy i was like really that seems crazy to me she's like i just don't think people she's like i just don't think people notice i think people just i 
know and like about the the classic recipe. And they just like stick to it and they don't even like think, they don't even think to notice the signs or whatever. All right, fair enough, but I've been looking forward to the crispy, so. I place an order on the first customer of the day. The guy in the back goes, there's gonna be a wait because we're just getting rolling here. And I'm like, totally, I get it. Worked in kitchens before, I know that it takes time to get your oil up to proper temperature and that I'm, you know, I'm right at the start of the day. So I totally get it, like take your time, I'll get it. So I'm sitting there chilling, talking to her She asked me what I'm up to for the rest of the day kind of thing. And I said, creative works, computer work, filming, editing, other creativity stuff. And um, we get to talking about, because I told her like I, I film videos and I edit and da da da. And I have my own like internet video type business or whatever. And then she brings up a local guy and then I bring up another local guy. And then, then she starts talking about, and this is something that you guys can tap into if you want, because it's available to all of you. It's on Crave. If you have Crave or any like uh, pirate type site, if you're that type of person, um, no judgment where you find shit to watch. Started talking about this documentary that just got released about my city call that is called Thunder Bay. So if you just search up Thunder Bay on Crave, it's a two part documentary shot by a local guy who um, I think he's partly, he has partly indigenous roots. He doesn't seem fully native. But it's in his heritage. And, um, You know, it's really well shot, really well edited, really well done. You know, it has syndication. It made it to Crave, which is a big deal in my opinion. Um, really well done documentary, you know, in my opinion, for something that's like completely independent. Definitely not a huge budget, you could tell. But these days you don't need a huge budget. You just need a laptop, microphones, some cameras, and, and a drone, really. like, And that's what he did. But he did source out so many good interview candidates, you know, professionals in these spaces that covered the problem that he's trying to cover in the documentary. And that is... Um, In my city, there's a huge problem with indigenous, uh, native people who, you know, they end up dead in rivers, basically. They come from remote communities. So, you know, born into a situation where they live in a, in, in nature, right? Old school, tribal. And these young indigenous kids that come here and this is the big city to them. 
they don't know how to adapt. They don't have their family. You know, they feel alone, they feel depressed, they don't, and they don't know how to keep up with the pace of this society because they come from trapping and fishing and um, just being close to the land and, and the land provides and it's a beautiful way of life, to be honest with you. I, I kind of wish I could exist more like that sometimes. Most days, I think of that. I just would love to just simplify. But, um, you know, they live in a more uh, hunter-trapper, survivalist-type way. And they just have their, little, their, their community, their people. And it's only like, you know, a few hundred maybe. They end up here to go to school, to get educated, to, to integrate into our type of society. And they end up in tragedy. And that tragedy is ultimately death. And that's what this guy's trying to get to the bottom of to cover. He's like, Is there somebody who's a racist killer here doing this? Is there, is there, is it just the fact that they get caught up in, you know, drugs and alcohol and depression and they get caught up in a crowd and then they end up being near to nature, which they're used to, right? They're used to being around the lakes and the rivers and all that, that's their way of life. But they end up, you know, dead in these waterways and, you know, the police aren't doing a good job and, and no one really knows the truth, ultimately, is, is, is what this documentary is trying to get at. It's like, what is the truth? Like, what's, you know, what does this boil down to? Is it, is it racism? Is it murder? Are these people dying by their own hand? Unfortunate deaths that perhaps could have been avoided if they weren't forced to come here and try to integrate into a society that maybe they didn't even want to exist in anyways. Maybe they liked where they lived. Like maybe... <laughs> they wanted to, to keep it simple and be tribal and live in their remote bush community and, 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 and just, you know, accept a, a more simple life that's one with nature and more one with the earth and with, with, with the mother and just accept like, yeah, I will eventually die and I don't need immortality and a thousand homes and a bunch of cars and all this shit that our society pushes and all the time because I'm not like that I don't like why is it that a cool a shiny car or like this like having a bunch of how like how does that make me a better person it doesn't it just it actually makes me more like a greedy because I know this I know this vessel is temporal I know that I'm in a temporary suit right I don't need a bunch of shit to to make me a good person. What makes me a good person is how I think and how I treat other people. That's it. <laughs> you know, we all need things to survive and live, but as far as things go, the more shit that you own, the more uh, dominion that you have over this world, it's like, what is it? that just makes you a captor of, of, of material, a captor of material of, of, the things that other people need to have a good life too. It just makes you a gluttonous, hoarding, money-hungry, ego-driven individual. It's like That's all that it makes you. To have all that shit. Oh, you're cool because you got a bunch of shit. What? What are you talking about? You've been fooled. You've been bamboozled by the game of life. You've been... You've literally been hypnotized by monopoly congratulations 
on playing the game Monopoly when you were, when you were young and letting it erode your fucking soul to the point where your mind became so obsessed with things that you forgot about actual people. Humility. Humanity. Each other. <laughs> and that we're temporal. We're fucking temporary. You're not getting out of this alive. No matter how much you collect, it do you can't have it. You it doesn't go with you. It just makes you a piece of shit while you're here. <laughs> Real talk. But if you use your resources to help other people, well, that's a different story. Rather than collect all the bejewels and the jazzes and the goods of the world. Oh, look at how awesome my house is. <laughs> you know? But either way, you live how the fuck you want to live. And I'll live how I want to live. Now, that being said... <laughs> I, I, I encourage you to go watch this thing called Thunder Bay. If you have any interest of knowing like where I was born and raised, where I back currently live, even though I lived away, you know this, we all know this. I am always harp on it. Maybe I miss it. I don't know. I think I'm looking for a new adventure though. But that being said though, this is, you know, where I'm from, where I live again. It's an interesting watch, you know, even though I elaborated exactly what it is, Still an interesting watch. If if your mind likes things like that, you know, um, then check it out. So Thunder Bay on Crave, a good watch. And also implement having a chat with somebody while you're just out and about. Just have a fucking little chat. Like it just, it's it's nice. It's good for the soul just to have a chat with somebody. Because we just, in our technology world, we just, we're all so like, can I, can I say anything? Can, like, there's so many times I'll go out in a day and I barely communicate with anybody because it's like, I'm not allowed to, like, be a human. I just have to pretend like I don't exist and, like, be good in the system. And, like, it's, it's, it's actually crazy to, if you think about it. It's like how little we speak to each other when we're out in public, you know? And when we do speak to each other, it's generally... Temper is flaring because, like, somebody cut you off in traffic. It's, like, most of our interactions are this negative, like, give me your insurance, you fuck, because you just fucking hit my car. Like, not many interactions in public are just like, hey, how, like, actually, what's up? Like, or just observatory, like, oh, nice. You like to do that? Cool. Like, it's very rare that in just in general public, it's like that. So, you know, it's like, hey, you fucked up my order. <laughs> Anyways, it life is crazy. But love y'all. Till the next one, eat good, live well. Stay true. If you like this content, please like, comment, and subscribe, as well as check out my pinned comment down below to find other ways to support this channel. Thank you for watching. Eat good, live well, and stay true.